for signing up to this video series. I'm really happy with the content I'm going to be presenting to you here, but I'm not here to glorify my work in any way because you are the real judge. So with that, let's just get to showing you how to make some awesome videos with ScreenFlow. If you've not done so already, download ScreenFlow Trial. You can use my link below here. Hey, I earned 20 bucks for that. But if you have it already, even better. The trial, I will tell you, has a watermark on it, but you will get the full sense of ScreenFlow while you're running through this course because the trial is fully functionable. So what is ScreenFlow and what can it do for you? ScreenFlow is a screen recording and editing program that in its most basic form allows you to record the actions of your computer monitor while also recording your voice and webcam if that's what you want as well. This makes the software ideal for creating tutorials, video instructions, webcam messages, training videos, website tours, etc. The uses are really limitless. Now if ScreenFlow were used just for that, rest assured, you would be in good hands with what I consider the best screencasting software on the market for any operating system. However, ScreenFlow is also an excellent video editor that allows the user to import video from your camera and create a full-featured home movie. Sure, you already have iMovie that does that, but you'll see in this series that ScreenFlow is much more versatile and full-featured than iMovie. In addition, having screencast and iMovie editing features in the same program, you can combine multiple elements to create some frigging awesome marketing videos. This is the very premise of combo casting, and it's why I just hope you're going to be blown away in this video series with some of the Okay, so let's start with a tour. Obviously, I love using ScreenFlow, and it is the most popular screencasting tool for the Mac. But when you first look at the software, it is unassuming and it kind of gives off the impression of being a rather basic tool. Not so. In fact, its simplistic layout is one of the reasons it is such a powerful program. The interface is basically divided into three distinct areas. The video display area, the timeline, and the media and action window. So let's start here. This is the video display area which shows your recorded content or anything else in the timeline. Whatever you see here is what will become your actual video. One thing new users often get confused about is that ScreenFlow automatically records your entire screen. ScreenFlow operates natively best like this, so just forget about selecting a smaller area to record because we take control of that in the editing process. However, if you are doing a website tour, for example, leave that web page in the same position on your screen as this will make editing much easier later on. Hey, don't worry if you're not following that concept just yet because this is just a tour of the features. We'll get into that later. No matter what size of content you bring into a ScreenFlow project, you can always adjust the dimensions using the resizing gadget here. Either manipulate it by grabbing or entering your dimensions below. Some common video dimensions are 640 by 480 and widescreen of 1280 by 720, which is what I prefer because it is the current format which will have the longest shelf life as an internet asset. If you look at YouTube and other video hosting services, they're all moving to HD size videos and the widescreen to me just looks more professional. It's your choice totally, but this is what I'm working in and thus the content of this course is presented in widescreen HD. Now after I size my video, you can see what I mean in this work area as it will display content that is outside of your video frame because some clips will be larger than your video and you just won't want to use everything in your final production. This area is also handy for introducing new images into your video using an action. Here I can take Emma's webcam here and move it in like so by simply adding a video action. That's how you sort of slide things in. At any time, if you want to play whatever you have in your production done so far, you can use these controls to play, pause, and rewind the video. You'll be using this often each time you add an effect or make any type of adjustment for review purposes. You just want to see how everything sort of looks after you've added some effects. Okay, so let's move on to the timeline. All of your work happens here because once you import content or start editing a project, all of the detail happens right here clip by clip. 
Clip by clip, I mean a video or audio recording, photo, image, or imported video. In fact, it can be a wide variety of assets. Remember, we are combo casting. Each clip is shown as a separate entity and can be moved on the track or to another track. The layers of tracks represent a visual hierarchy whereby whatever is on top will be shown in the forefront of the video. Makes sense, just like pieces of paper on top of each other. But in ScreenFlow, some of those pieces will be different shapes. So if your top layer is your biggest dimension, it's going to hide everything else underneath. If it's smaller, then the next layer, or layers, will then show up on the video canvas. Now since I'm using ScreenFlow 3 here, this new feature was added that allows for resizing the width of the track and easily rearranging content layers. This does not change the dimensions of your video whatsoever. It's only there to help clean up your workspace and help focus on editing a particular track. The scrubber, which can be dragged back and forth, is showing on your video canvas. Basically, that's just showing what is in these tracks at that precise moment. You can also use the golf club at the bottom of the scrubber to separate all of your tracks. This allows for inserting other content at precise moments. Now again, we're sticking to the basics here, so let's just move on to the media and effects panels, which is all up in the top right corner. Now the tabs here represent the real power behind ScreenFlow software, since each of them have a wide variety of uses. Video properties is where you manipulate tracks in your timeline by adding positioning, shape, movement, structure, effects, and even coloring. Audio actions allow you to control the audio levels in your clips, as well as leveling controls such as ducking and smoothing, and new for ScreenFlow 3 effects that can transport your audio to different spaces, and the removal of background noise using the isotope filter. The screen recording properties provide visual features for your mouse or the pointer you want to use, which can be a custom made ping file, and also the ability to instantly show the keys pressed on your keyboard during a tutorial. That's a really cool feature for a lot of Mac users that like to use keyboard shortcuts. Then we have callout properties which are added to your clips to focus or perhaps blur an area of the screen. There's lots of powerful features there too and we have a whole video on callouts and annotations which is the next one which are a fast way to produce images like arrows that are needed to direct the viewer's attention to a particular spot on the canvas. Of course, you can text over your screencast too, using whatever fonts are in your system. You can also add any type of video effect to your text boxes as well, make them do some cool things. Finally, the media file basically holds the icons of the different content sources of your video. Everything will be in here that is available for your production, including pictures, graphics, screencasts, and movie files. To use something in ScreenFlow, it has to be in the media holder. You can add media by going to your files or add an on-the-fly recording if you need it. Another new thing for ScreenFlow 3 is the ability to preview your content from within the media holder and also resizing the icons so as to be able to arrange different view options. Okay, there you have a basic tour of ScreenFlow 3 and let me tell you, I did zoom through that. You want to start having fun and building videos. So in the next video, we're going to make a screencast and get down to work editing it and start using some of these tools that we've just gone through. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Ciao.